So today is gonna be a bit different than normal. I've currently got about five miles of hiking left until I get to a site that has produced a lot of really nice mastodon teeth in the past, including one of my favorite jaw segments. Look at that. Once we get there, I'll suit up and then we'll start working our way back and see if we can't find any other Ice Age animals. But most of today is gonna to be dedicated to this insanely long hike. Lost in the sight of you alone Here I'll stay till dawn We are starting to get closer to the first Mastodon site, but I've gotta say, it can get really eerie out here. The only thing I've been hearing is the occasional plane flying overhead and you can get kind of creeped out when you're all alone in a remote area like this but one of you guys one of my patreon supporters Kurt Lettner actually sent us an emergency satellite beacon which I didn't have in all of my years doing this before so now that I have that I can go out here with a little bit more peace of mind I know my wife appreciates that a lot so thank you so much Kurt we're gonna get to that first site, and hopefully we're gonna find some really cool Ice Age fossils today. And finally, here we are. It's time to get suited up and do some fossil hunting. Here we go. I can only hunt this river for a short period every year, but every time I come, I find cool Ice Age fossils. Most of these fossils are late Pleistocene, which means they came right before the extinction of the megafauna. That would be around 13 to 50,000 years ago. These animals were living in this area, died, got buried, and turned into rock, leaving behind teeth and bones that get exposed after every single Florida rainy season. Not a bad start. Look at that, that's a nearly perfect camelid tooth. Really good roots, just one little chip in the enamel right there. Then after that we got a sweet Ice Age horse tooth. That's an incredible shape. It's a good start to the day, and it's got me hopeful to figure out what might be further down the river. All right, we're coming up on spot number two. I can't believe how crystal clear the river is today, but there's a deep hole right here. I can already see there's no gators, and it should be easy to check real quick. Hopefully there's something there. It did not take long to start finding some really unique Ice Age bones in this location. Literally every catch had bone. Spots like this are really unique because you really don't know what's going to be there, but you know there are fossils there. It's that anticipation that really makes a spot like this cool. Now, unfortunately, this spot did not have anything spectacular, but it did have some really unique Ice Age fossils and was a really cool sign that the river was eroding new material. Not so bad. I've got a whole collection of giant armadillo scutes. Each of these are the bony skin that would have protected that crazy animal. Wow, that is cool. We also got a very cool limb bone right here, most likely to a deer. Very well cooked, I like finding this kind of stuff. We're already at the next spot. Most bends in this river are gonna have Ice Age exposures. So as long as we can cover ground today, we do have a high chance to find some more cool fossils. But it's cold, at least the visibility is so good I'll be able to spot any gators, but I gotta get under here. This next spot had pea gravel, which you can find really unique micro fossils in. So we found two very tiny fossils that we normally would miss in a spot with bigger gravel. That's cool, I'll have to get the camera for that. What really surprised me about this spot though was how much giant armadillo armor was in this area. Normally we might find three or four of these in a fossil hunt, but this one location had really high quality scoots. I think we found five in this location. We also found a lot of these weird 
eel-like freshwater fish. Um, little aquatic nope ropes, as it says. Okay, so in terms of giant armadillo scoots, I am absolutely killing it. We've got four more of those. Put that in the bag with the other three we've got. And then check this out. That is the nicest fossilized rodent jaw I have ever found. It is literally perfect. That is so cool. And then we got an interesting, I think that is going to be a taper incisor. Not really sure on that one. And then might be camel. And then another little incisor right there. It's hard to see the detail on these, but cool little teeth. And I've got so much more river to hunt. It's crazy to think about how many animals must have died out here for them to show up as fossils this often. And even the fossils we're finding are just a small lens. These little pockets of gravel that accumulate in the river. If you took the total amount of fossils that are actually out here, it would boggle the mind. We're walking over mammoths, mastodons, giant ground sloths every few minutes. This whole area is absolutely loaded. But you just gotta find little bits of gravel in the river where these animals are being exposed and eroded. I'm getting caught by cypress knees. Let's hope we can find some more because it is definitely out here. So I'm gonna stick the camera in just for one look and then I am getting out of here and further down the river. But that That's a 10 foot alligator right below us. Wow. That's insane. Oh my gosh, there's another look at it underwater. The glare is barely hiding it. I did not see it when I was climbing up on this log. But there is an alligator in there and it is not tiny. Holy crap. Look at that tail. All right, we are a ways away from that crazy gator. I've got a new stretch of river right here that looks really good, and I'm gonna get underwater and start finding fossils again. My adrenaline levels are back down to here, so I think we'll be fine the rest of the day. Seeing an alligator underwater where you're hunting always puts you a little bit on edge, but honestly, these are animals you just have to respect like any other. It's pretty cold right now on this day of hunting, so I knew the animal would be lethargic, and their visibility is so good that if we take it slow, there's not really a chance that we're going to run into any in a potentially dangerous situation. So we got back to fossil hunting, and this last spot of the day had a ton of different bone and teeth, including this massive gator tooth. Really good shape. It's always fun when you have a spot like this where you can just pick up tons of different fossils, bones, and teeth, and super clear water. It definitely beats black water. And I was really thankful that we were still finding unique fossils. This next tooth is a giant ground sloth tooth, which normally just look like pieces of bone and are very rare. We got some more camel teeth as well. This one was really hard to spot, but once you know what you're looking for, it's not too bad and then giant tortoise. You can't go into Florida rivers that have Ice Age fossils and not find some giant tortoise. Well, I'm out of the water for the final time today. I found some cool stuff in this last bend, but we're gonna hike back to the car once we get there. I'll lay everything out from today's hunt. We are back at the Honda. I am no longer soaking wet. I'm out of my wetsuit. I've got dry clothes on. We'll take a look at what we found today. Three Ice Age horse teeth, two Ice Age camel teeth, with that one being really nice. If it wasn't for that little bit right there that broke off, that would have been such a killer tooth. Well, as Joe would say, grazer tooth. We've got a perfect rodent jaw. I'm not sure what species that is. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below, but I'll figure that one out. Really cool, my Mbensis shark tooth. Some big gator teeth. Like those would have been enormous. Maybe even a little bit bigger than the one we saw underwater. Seven, seven different giant armadillo scoots. One of my best days finding these. And these things are so cool. Having armored skin basically to protect itself from the giant Ice Age predators. And getting seven of those, that is pretty sweet. We also got 
a decently rare find in this giant ground sloth tooth. They don't have any enamel, so all that's left is just the dentine and cementum, and they're pretty uncommon, so that's a cool little tooth right there. A few other things, some isolated bones, some mastodon ivory and enamel, but overall those are the highlights from today. If you want to own your own piece of history and support the channel at the same time, all of these fossils will be on our online shop at diggingscience.com shop. It's linked in the description below. Thank you guys so much for joining me on today's adventure. If you enjoyed it, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, keep on digging science.